Bed Adventures, everybody, and welcome to episode 27 of Books Cubed. I am feeling much better, so much better than I have for not quite a month. I know last week I said, it's been a month that I've been dizzy, but obviously the dizziness was getting to me because it had only been a couple of weeks. And still, I am feeling so much better. I'm almost ready to start driving again on my own, which uh, my family will be very happy about because everybody's been driving me everywhere because I'm just, I don't trust myself behind the wheel quite yet. So this week, I have got a great guest for you. You're really going to like the show this week. I am talking with Tyler Davis, and he and his wife are the team behind the pen name Christine Zane Thomas. And this is Cozy Mysteries, more Cozy Mysteries this month. And I have been reading The Salty Taste of Murder, actually listening to the audiobook of it. And it is a foodies file mystery. So I'll be talking with Tyler in just a moment. Let me quickly read you his bio, their bio. Excuse me. Sorry, Jen. Christine St. Thomas is the pen name of a husband and wife team. A shared love of mystery and sleuths spurred the creation of their own mystery writer alter ego. While not writing, they can be found in Northwest Florida with their two children and schnauzer Tinkerbell. When not at home, their love of food takes them all around the South. Sometimes they sprinkle in a trip to Disney World, one of my favorite places. Food and wine is their favorite season. And um, one of ours too, and we talk a little about running. Uh, we kind of got off on a tangent. Um, Tyler didn't. I did. Sorry, Tyler. Uh, talking about uh, the races at Disney World. If you are a runner at all, you desperately need to run a Disney race. Uh, the 5K, the 10K, the half or the full, any of those, do the Dopey Challenge where you do all of them. Uh, I think the Goofy Challenge is just the half and the 10K, um, but I might be wrong. Uh, my husband is more the expert when it comes to what things are called. Um, I'm just as bad as the character in, in the series that I write where I can't remember the names of anything at any time. So uh, make everyone crazy. So I talked with Tyler and um, I guess I'll just get right to it. I really have nothing to add. I'm finally back to writing uh, of my own. Now that I'm feeling better uh, this last week, I have been working on the next book in the June Nash Misadventure series. And uh, it's fun and it was supposed to be out in stores next week. <laughs> and then it was gonna be to my editor next week. And now it is going to be to my editor probably sometime in May. Uh, right now, I think um, the last week of May, most likely. Uh, that's only because I ended up being almost a month behind thanks to my cochlear implant surgery. And then about three weeks of dizziness from, um, uh, I guess they said it was like overstimulation as they were uh, upping the power in the uh, implant on the right uh, it started making me dizzy. And so um, we kind of went back a few steps and I took some medication for a while and uh, didn't go anywhere, laid in a chair for like three weeks and um, watched a lot of Netflix. I couldn't look at my computer and I really couldn't look at my cell phone. Uh, did some writing by hand, but that does, that's, that's not great for me because then I have to type it into a computer and it makes me nuts. So uh, I'm finally, like I said, I'm finally feeling better. I'm a happy camper again. Um, I'm hopefully going to start back to running in just a couple of weeks. I see my surgeon in the second week in May. So uh, I'm hoping to get cleared to start running again because we have several races that we are, are planning for. And we think we want to run the, the uh, Dopey Challenge next January at Disney World, which is the 5K one day, the 10K the next the half on the third day, and then the full marathon, full marathon on the fourth day. And uh, I, I don't know, we, we, we're really excited about doing that. So uh, we're going to train for it. Uh, if nothing else, we'll train for the marathon, but I'd really like to try to do all four. So I'd really like to get back to running again, uh, which means that I need to uh, start getting back to getting outside and getting some exercise and you know, taking a month off because of illness really threw my training uh, off. And uh, we went for a walk two days ago and we walked about two miles and my legs were so sore afterwards. And my husband said, oh no, this is not good. 
and I agree. So um, I'm, tonight we're going to do a, a three-mile walk in just a little while here, do some speed walking and get myself back up to um, running strength again. And supposedly, if you have to take time off from running and you are a runner, uh, it's easy to get back into it again. I'm hoping that is true. Uh, I need to get back to um, my uh, uh, marathon training. And we're not fast marathon runners. We were watching the Boston Marathon this morning. And if any of you watched it, it was wonderful. Uh, the girl who won, she went out early. And we kept saying, oh, no, once she hits the hills, she's going to be a goner. But she looked fantastic from the moment she pulled away from the pack until she crossed the finish line. She never looked bad. And um, the woman who won last year, I have totally for Des, Des, uh, something like that. Oh, sorry, ma'am. She, uh, she was first last year, and she came in fifth this year which is fantastic. So that was really fun to watch. Uh, we did that this morning and um, watched that. And it got me wanting to get back out and be running again. So I'm very excited about um, getting my training back. So anyway, after that long and windy introduction, let us get to the interview with Tyler. So here it is. Welcome, Tyler. Uh, today I have Tyler Davis with me, and he and his wife write as a team with the pen name of Christine Zane Thomas. And I uh, got two of his books, one I finished and one I have not started yet, but I think he's going to read from that one today, so I'm excited about that. The one that I read is The Salty Taste of Murder, and I really liked it. It's my first time reading a um, food cozy and I guess uh, uh, there's, it, I, I listened to the audio book, but I guess there's recipes inside the book? Yes. Um, I'm not sure about the first book, but definitely set the second book through the fourth, we realized that they needed to have recipes. Cool, cool. So tell everybody a little bit about what you two write. Sure. So, so yeah, my wife and I um, write Cozy Mysteries. This is kind of, I'll, I'll start back a little ways. Um, it started a few years ago. Um, I decided to write uh, a few fantasy novels. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of Sir Terry, Sir, Sir Terry Pratchett. And uh, I decided to write some humorous fantasy novels. And after I finished that series, I was telling my wife, like, I was like, oh, I think, you know, um, we've been watching these Hallmark Mystery Channel movies. And, and I used to be a big Cat Who fan when, when I was in middle school. And I was like, I, I'm gonna write a cozy mystery. And Jen said, you know what? I'm, I'm going to do that too. And she wrote two books in the time that it took me to write one book. Um, and so that was the first two foodie file mysteries. Um, and then I wrote uh, the first of the comics and coffee case files. Um, and so basically what we do is we kind of trade off manuscripts. We, uh, we both write one draft and then the, the second draft is kind of like rewritten um, by the other. And that's where we kind of, we try to make the voice kind of sound the same. Um, well, it worked. It worked. It felt like it was one person writing. How hard is it to write with your spouse? It's not that bad because she really, like, she really lets me have a lot of free reign um, in, in both series. She, she like, I don't know. She, she likes um, to write the first draft, really, and, and she kind of, like, just, she's like, do what you do, you know? Um, I changed a... Uh, I changed a killer, um, and in fact, I think in the first book. <laughs> um, a, and so just, she lets me have free reign and it works out really well. Nice, it's nice that it works out so well. I, I could never write anything with my husband, it just wouldn't work. So <laughs> why don't you read a sample, um, tell everybody, show everybody the book and let us know what book you're reading from and then read a sample from that book. Sure, so this is Marvel's Mochas and Murder. It's the first in the comics and coffee case files. Um, so I have a male protagonist, which is a little different. Um, and uh, it also stars a dog, but the dog's not gonna be in this first snippet. But the, the dog plays a very big portion of, of the later books. Um, his name is Gambit. Um, he's named after a comic book character and he's a lot of fun. All right, so chapter one. Every day there was one, and today's had come early, with the very first customer. Of course, I used the word customer lightly. He hadn't bought anything, not yet. He just eyed the menu with a sort of skepticism. 
I was getting used to these types. Folks who looked at the shop like it belonged on another planet. See, I knew the problem, and I was ready to throw my hands up, to give up and cut my co-owner Ryan from the business completely. Ryan, I thought, gritting my teeth. This was sp supposed to be a partnership, 50-50, but he was nowhere to be seen, not this early in the morning. The guy continued his perusal while I just stood and watched his eyes flicker back and forth. The menu wasn't different from any other coffee shop, not different from a Starbucks, really. The shop itself, well, that was a different story. A comic book and coffee shop, the guy finally said, grinning. Or is it a coffee and comic shop? The look he gave me indicated how perplexing the question truly was. Hint, hint, it wasn't perplexing in the least. I shrugged and gave him my best tight-lipped smile. It's cute, really, kapow coffee. He emphasized the misspelling of the word coffee. I just had to see it. Well, now you've seen it, I thought. But I said, yeah, it's a real novel concept. He chuckled at my lame joke. In the months since the shop opened, this shtick was almost a weekly occurrence. And per usual, it was some rich guy from across the bay, either on vacation or just passing by the shop for the first time. What a jerk, I thought snidely, my lips still pressed together with this smile. So what are the specials, he asked. He was an older man maybe 55, he wore a Titleist ball cap. His purple polo shirt was tucked into khaki shorts, white ankle socks inched over his golf shoes, the old school kind, white with a brown saddle in the center. A golfer this time of morning wasn't necessarily unusual. We had a few regulars that liked to stop in on their way to the links, but this guy I didn't recognize. Oh, lost my pace. Not that it meant he wasn't a local, he very well could be. I'd grown up in Nohasi, but I'd spent the past almost 10 years away. I'd only moved back last year. Southeast of Tallahassee, the city itself was named after the bay, not vice versa. Nohasi Bay, a brackish mass of water, sat between us and the island. It was named by the Seminole tribe for the way the moon reflected on the water at night, Moon Bay. Technically, Gaiman Island was also part of the city, full of condos, timeshares, weekend and summer homes of the rich, it may as well have been another part of the universe. The toll bridge was a dividing line between their Mecca and the rest of us. Sure, a sliver of public beach was available to all. We used it, if grudgingly, but the rest of the island was gated. The houses there sold for prices well into the millions, with its own private airstrip and services to pick up food and supplies from here across the bay. Most of the island's inhabitants never need venture to our side of reality. This guy was either a tourist or one of the part-time residents. Yes, Nihahasi did get tourists from time to time, but not in droves like the white sand beaches in the west in Panama City and Destin. Here, the sand was a cream color and the water was only emerald about one day a month. The sad fact, I was holding on to some hope that business would pick up now that summer had fully kicked in. Hope that guys like this one would head past the downtown strip on their way to one of Nihahasi's many country clubs. Now I was regretting that hope. Well, I told him, there's a buy two bags, get one free coffee special. I motioned to the assortment of ground coffees in their brown bags. Or there's a, no, he cut me off, his smile growing broader. I meant the comic and coffee special. He pointed to the chalkboard sign at the entrance of the shop. Oh, uh, that, I grimaced. To be honest, the comic book side of the shop wasn't my idea. I'd only agreed to it because I had to. Coffee was my side of the house. I hadn't read a comic book since the eighth grade. I reached under the counter, scanned the shelf, then grabbed an old issue of Batman Detective Comics. So, I ventured, if you buy any specialty latte and an old comic from this shelf, you get them both 50% off. He eyed the shelf, then the menu. He crunched the numbers inside his head. That's the same price as a latte, he confirmed. My hold on the comic's outer plastic bag was already slipping as I readied to put it back. I think I'll just take the latte. He laughed like we were both in on the same inside joke. So there, nice, nice. I'm just going to hang on. I'm just going to turn my mic volume down just a little bit because it's super loud in my ears. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know if that was too long or not. No, no, I was for my ears with my cochlear implants. It's hard sometimes to figure out 
what settings are going to work. You know, so I'm always, um, I've always, people think I'm on my phone, like doing stuff and I'm not, I'm like adjusting my volume and my ears so I can hear in bars or restaurants right. or whatever. Um, I used to work with somebody. Anyways, oh, that's good. That's good. So, um, how many, how many, you have two series. Mm -hmm. So how many books are in each, each series? So on, on Friday, book four of Foodie Files is going to be released. Yeah, I saw and, that. Yeah. So then we have two books in Comics and Coffee Case Files. And I think it's like May 12th or something like that. Um, uh, book three will be released in Comics and Coffee. Um, I, I'm still working on it. It's about um, two thirds of the way, like really complete. <laughs> but I'll, I'll finish it. Oh yeah, I know that feeling. I've got one that was supposed to come out next week <laughs> and I'm still writing it. Yeah. So I got a little sidetracked with some um, dizzy issues thanks to my implant. So I'm like a month behind. I'm looking at my calendar thinking, oh, I'm never gonna finish. It's a, do you, do you have, how, how many books do you put out a year then? Um, so usually it's about a book, so it's about a book every two months um, for, for us, um, and, but, but these are like novellas. They're like 25 to 35,000 words. Um, when I was writing my fantasy novels that are about 60 to 70,000, it would take me like four or five months. Um, so I was only getting out like two books a year. Do you have but any of those published? Well, no. How, are any of your uh, sci-fi books published? Your those yeah, the fantasy, the fantasy books are all published. Uh, there's three of them, um, and there's a novella as well. Um, in fact, I had a book bub uh, last week um, for the trilogy Spock set. Um, it did pretty well. It got to like number 52 in the store. Um, nice. Was, yeah. yeah. Um, nice. So was, That's really nice. Okay, so I only had like five more books after it, <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> so you you have your wife to write with. Uh, do you have, do you go off to, a, do you have like a circle of friends that you can go to, to run ideas or just for support when you want to move just out away from each other or even together? Uh, yeah, like, so that's one of the best things that, uh, that have happened in like the past few months is I created a discord channel um, that I, I, I think I named it Cozy Mystery Mastermind um, that I, I'm in like, I offered it to like everyone within the 20 books cozy mystery group uh, and only like, you know, a handful of people um, kind of like, were like, yeah, I'll, I'll join that. Um, but it's the, the few people that are in it, there's like five or six that are really like, you know, in it every day um, talking and uh, we, we have a good, you know, chat. We, you know, help promote each other. We, uh, we, you know, talk about uh, different uh, plot points. Uh, we we critique covers. We we do a lot of stuff that you know normally like you know uh, we've got a lot of that online. Uh, you know with the twenty books groups and stuff like that. But it's nice to have like a, a inner circle um, to do that with that you know you're going to get some feedback immediately. Yeah, yeah. You know it's 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 hard when you're writing is a very solitary thing. So. The internet has been great for writers, you know, connecting yeah. people all around the world. I mean, you're, you're in the same state I am, but we're like all the way across. So if I'd tried to go to you in person, it would have taken me like all day to get there. Right. So, so are all the people in your group, you said, are all people that are established writers? Uh, so it's kind of a, a gambit. Um, there is, uh, so Hillary um, Avis, uh, she's got several books out, like, like four or five. Um, and she's in my group and yeah, she lives in like Portland, I think. Um, and, and so then there, uh, funny enough, there's somebody who lives in Panama city, which yeah, I could, I could drive there in two hours, you know? Um, but, but we're, you know, it's online friends. And then there's someone who's in Hawaii um, and she's working on her first book. And it's, it's funny to interact with her because yeah, she's, you know, she'll usually message, you know, and it's like midnight our time, you know, we're, we're like all going to bed. And then by the time she's like, you know, she's in bed, we're talking, you know, so. Um, yeah, that could, I was, I used to chat with someone on Twitter who was in uh, Australia. Yeah. One of the so two, yeah. He'd be going to bed and I'd be making breakfast. Right. 
<laughs> and it was he was a writer too, and we just finally gave up because it was just too hard to communicate to each other. So you got this the new one new writer in your group. What kind of now you're established? You got a lot of books under your belt now. So what kind of tips would you give to someone who is just up and coming? Because I know some of my listeners too are writers and not just readers. So if you're an, an up and coming writer and you haven't really done too much yet, what kind of things would you tell them to look out for to to try to work toward? Sure. So I would say start off newsletter like almost immediately. Try to you know try to get a short story or even just a few chapters of what you're working on together, and you know give that out to people um, on there's you know. Uh, what is Insta Freebie? Uh, prolific Works, um, Book Funnel. Um, give it out and build that newsletter up as as soon as you can because those are going to be like the people that are going to review your books. They're they're going to be the first people to buy your books. They're you know just as soon as you you can get that going, you know the better. Uh, I'd also say that don't spend too much money um, promoting your first book. Um, when you only have one book out, um, I made that mistake with my fantasy. Um, and yeah, it cost me uh, like, cause I was trying, I, I think I, I put it out at 99 cents and expected to get some sort of return on investment with ads when, you know, I wasn't making very much with a book, um, with only one. Um, so I, I, I corrected that. Um, we had three books out, we had two foodie files and marbles out when I started running ads. And so almost from the get go, we've been somewhat profitable. I mean, we're not making a lot of money, um, but you know, it's still a little bit, you know, enough to make, buy coffee every day, you know, and stuff like that. And that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> as long as you're in the, in the black, it's um, now, how about, let's see, whoops, there's something else. Um, Oh, okay. Here's one. I was just talking with my, I shared my office with um, two of my kids who are graphic artists. So they're quiet. Uh, yeah. But do you work at home? And you said, because there's two of you, one does a draft and then the other goes through and, and does the second draft. So, yeah. So, um, so I work at home. I, I'm a software developer um, in my, for my day job. And uh, Jen stays at home with, with our son right now. She's actually going to go back to work uh, next year. She's a teacher. Um, but what, what usually I do, every morning I get up before the kids are up. I'm up at like 5 a.m. And I write for at least an hour, sometimes an hour and a half, depending on if the kid wakes up or not. <laughs> um, but, uh, but I write for at least an hour. I try to get 500 to 1,000 words every, every morning. Um, and then usually when we trade off drafts, it, it, it goes a lot faster. So I usually in two weekends can kind of like, um, go like over like 4,000 words a day on the weekend out of an edit. Um, and that's, or at least that's my goal. It's like 4,000 words, um, on the weekend, um, of editing. Um, so that's kind of how we do it. And then Jen, Jen, Jen's amazing. She, uh, she can write kind of whenever. Um, I, I have to have quiet. That's why I'm up in the morning. Um, she can put on a movie for the kids and she can write during the, while the movie's happening and stuff. And I can't do that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I like a little bit of a little bit of noise. Um, I usually go to us. There's a Starbucks that they built right by my house. So it's real close. So I will go there usually. But it's starting to get too expensive. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I need to get one more chair for my office and then the three of us can all work at the same time. Oh, my yeah. chair. I, I like to act out my scenes. Can you hear uh, my chair squeaky? <laughs> my chair is squeaky. I'm, I'm sure mine does too. I have one chair that's falling apart and one chair that's really nice and I didn't think to sit in the really nice chair. So every time I move just a little bit, it squeaks really loud. <laughs> God. Yeah. Now, I, like I said, I can't write at home and you said it's just a little bit of little bit of noise can bother you. Is there something yeah. that absolutely throws you that absolutely is like your um, kryptonite to Superman that absolutely keeps you from writing? See, it, I think it's, it's mostly like I need quiet, but it's, I have to be at home almost because I try, I like act out scenes. And so I don't want to look like a maniac. 
Um, <laughs> because yeah, like it, that, that whole scene that I just read, you know, uh, I'm that, that happened here at this desk, you know, <laughs> like I, I, I talked that whole thing out. Um, and yeah, uh, but kryptonite wise, um, I would say it's mostly other ideas. Like it's not necessarily that I'll stop writing. Um, it's that something new and shiny will like, you know, it'll, it'll show up in my head and I can, I have to get it down before I can, you know, even do the thing that I'm working on again, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. I know that. And I forgot to read your, your bio at the front and I'll, I'm, I'll read it when I, before I, when I start, but I see that um, uh, you're just like us, but most Florida people are big Disney fans. Well, not most, but a lot of them. I, well, the smart ones. <laughs> so, you, yeah. but I see you mentioned the food and wine, the food and wine festival. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Oh yeah. That's our favorite. My husband and I are runners. So we go up and we do the half marathons and in January. My, my wife does um, that. Have you done, have you done any races? Jen, Jen, well, yes. Okay. So Jen has done the half marathon, which I think is kind of insane. Um, I didn't imagine, I, I could never imagine like there would be that many people doing it. Um, but there were so many, like there was, there was just a sea of people and I didn't, I didn't imagine it, you know? Um, but the race that I, I did there, I did this like 10 years ago. Um, I, I did a half Ironman there. Um, there wasn't so many people um, doing the half Ironman, but I still got kicked a lot in the, in the swim, but, but it was a lot of fun. Oh yeah, it, it was fun. We did um, the marathon this last January. And the one thing that we forgot to do was bring money with us because as people go through Epcot, they go by the Mexican pavilion and they get margaritas and they carry the margarita the rest of the way because you're really close to the end there when you pass, as you go around World Showcase, then you come out through the parking lot and it ends in the parking lot. And I told my husband, oh my God, we forgot to bring money with us. And we didn't even have a wristband with us to charge it to the room or anything. Right. So we got to remember that next time, but we're toying with the idea of doing the dopey challenge next year, okay. which is the 5k one day, the 10k the next day, the ah. half, the third day, and then the full, the fourth day. Oh my goodness. But like a 70 something year old guy did it this last time. And if a 70 year old guy can do it, <laughs> I gotta be able to do it. So I'll, I'll right. just be at the world showcase drinking beer and, and eating. <laughs> Oh yeah, I love World Showcase. The, uh, the first one, the first race we did up there was Wine and Dine, which is in November. It's during the Wine and Dine Food Festival. And mm -hmm. it used to be where you would start running at 10 o'clock at night. And then they would have the, you'd be able to go to the Food and Wine Festival until like four in the morning and there'd be a big party. And supposedly mm -hmm. it was all crazy in the, in the German pavilion and everybody doing karaoke and, or singing together or something. And the first year we did it, it rained. So nobody went to the, hardly anybody went. We just got on the bus and went back to the hotel because we were so cold. Then the next year, there was a storm or it got canceled or something. The next year we couldn't go. Then the next year after that, they made it a daytime race, which we were really sad about because there was something really cool about running at night and then right. them running through those parks. Yeah, that would be neat. And and even now it's kind of, it's like daytime race, but you're like up at like 3.30 in the morning, right? <laughs> so yeah. yeah, yeah, it's crazy. To get, if you drive your own car, you can leave a little bit later. I think we left at 4.30 in the morning and drove ourselves to the marathon. But when the, but in previous years we've, we've done, when we do halves, we've ridden the bus and you have to get on the bus at like before 3 a.m. And then they've got all this stuff going on and you've got 20,000 people or whatever sitting in this big parking lot and they've got entertainment and photos you can get in line for and right. they've got a big dance party going on. But we never want to use too much energy up. So we usually just, we always have, um, because it's so early in the morning, we always have um, sweatpants and a sweatshirt that we pull off right before the race starts. And we, so we're able to sit on the ground and, you know, not, yeah. Not um, be sitting on pebbles or whatever and be bothered, but we just sit there and kind of lean our bench backs against each other and just sleep until it's time to start. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did, yeah, Jen but, uh, does that. Did so? Has she, she's just done the the one race. 
Yeah, she's just done, I think it was the 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 food and wine one. Yeah, I, I forget what it was called. But yeah, she, or no, it was the princess. It was the princess. One. The princess is fun. Um, the Star Wars one is fun. We did the, the inaugural dark side for the first two or three years, but we didn't do it this last year. It was, um, it's in April. I think it was like a couple of weeks ago even. Okay. Yeah, I think it was just a couple of weeks ago, but that... <laughs> Everybody, if you've if you've never if you're listening and you've never done a Disney race, go online and and type into Google "Run Disney" and then look at some of these pictures. It's amazing the costumes that these people will run in. There was somebody running in the um, in the in the Star Wars race. They had like planets attached to him, and he was holding onto this costume as he was running. It looked so uncomfortable, and and it's a half marathon. So you got a long time to be carrying all this stuff. So you really want to, you know, you really want to run in something that's um, very uh, uh, minimal. You know, Peter Pan costume, perfect, because there's not a lot of, not a lot to it. Or Tinkerbell, something like that. You see a lot of Tinkerbells and Peter Pans, <laughs> uh, which is fun. But yeah, that, that's a good one. She should do, um, God, which one was I going to say? You know, any of them are really fun. It, seriously are fun and i know we're going to be doing um the let's see we just did the one up in cape canaveral the inaugural one last year and you run through where all the launch pads are and were and you run right past spacex and it was so cool to be back and looking at all this stuff and all the the history in this, and you got to run on the runway that the space shuttles would fly down or, or land on. And that's more my speed. Like, um, I was that kid in middle school where, um, like my, my whole family, you know, was like, do we really have to go to, to Cape Canaveral, you know, to Kennedy? Um, cause I was like in middle school and my mom was like, yeah, like this is what Tyler wants. So, so we're going to go here this one day. Then the rest of the time we'll be at Disney and stuff like that. You didn't like Cape Canaveral? Oh, I loved it. Yeah, like oh. I, I loved it. Uh, that I, it was, it was me that everyone like my sister was like not wanting to go. You know, um, so yeah, it was a fun time. Yeah, we, we haven't gone inside. We're gonna go inside. We've got some friends coming down, and we're gonna all go up together, save it for that. But yeah, I'm a big space buff. I, my son and I went to space camp together when, when he was in school, and it was we had such a great time. Got to go and that that it's a circular thing and you sit inside it and they spin you and you go all different directions yeah it wasn't the one where you step there's one where then you steady yourself and right. you make yourself stop spinning this one they just spin you it was so much fun <laughs> i loved it so much so one of these one of these days i'm going to do something probably outer space ish but but i write um right now i write cozy i guess it's cozy i keep getting everybody all my also bots are all cozy mysteries so i'm like okay whatever <laughs> and um, my third book takes place in Cape Canaveral. So oh, nice. my husband, we have to go and I have to spend a couple days and I've got a friend who's an astrophysicist. So I'm very excited about having him help me with just enough detail, but not too much because right. my character doesn't listen and doesn't pay attention and doesn't notice it. It's like when I, when I was writing, I, like for your police scenes, did you do you have, for me, I, my police expert, every time I sent him my pages, he would say, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. And finally, I just had my character close her eyes and everything <laughs> happens around her and she opens her eyes and it's all done. So yeah. do, how, did you, how did you handle like, the, you have a we lot of things with cops in this first one that I read. Yeah, we, we try to make it as minimal as kind of we can make it, but um, I have a cousin that's a, a sheriff's deputy. So I do, I ping things off of him. Um, but yeah, like it, it is tough because yeah. And, and, you know, I'll also say that I, knowing the, the cozy market and like the, you know, the, the readers, I, I probably did myself a disservice with naming my book, the comics and coffee case files, because they kind of like see comics and probably think, oh gosh, this is a cozy mystery with, you know, Iron Man in it. And, you know, uh, but but really, I tried to do the my best writing around it. You know, like I I, I love comic books. You can see like the Captain Marvel, uh, the Captain America uh, back there. Um, but but yeah, I love 
comics, but I tried to make my character kind of not in love with comics and kind of grudgingly at this place. And so I just sprinkle in my little details that I want to be there, but it's real, it's still really a cozy. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And it's good to have, that's, that's great that you got a relative. That's a, that's a police officer. Yeah. That is so perfect. So perfect. Okay. And I know there was something else we were going to chat about. Oh, oh, okay. This is one. I, and now for me, when I was a kid, I read, I read, I wish I could remember what the book was called. Uh, but I read this book, absolutely loved it. I was probably in fourth or fifth grade, read it like over and over, went to the library, kept getting it. And this absolutely tragic, I can't even remember what happened. All I remember was it's very tragic and it absolutely destroyed me. And that's why I wanted to be a writer because I wanted to fix what happened to this poor character in this book and make it better for this character. So, and that just destroyed me. I wish I could remember the name of the book, but did you, did you always want to be a writer? I mean, was there something that, that like for you, like for me, something that, that just destroyed you or something that elevated you and you just wanted to continue on that path? Somewhat. Yeah. Like I, I, I knew I wanted to write since middle school. Um, but I think, I think like kind of like what you're saying, um, the first book I can kind of remember and just, just, it, it also like was tragic and just, you know, destroyed me. And, but it also is like the first book I remember just loving uh, is Number of the Stars, uh, which is Lois Lowry. Uh, every, you know, the, everybody loves The Giver, but this is like her, um, this is her uh, World War II, um, kind of almost like um, a fictionalized uh, version of Anne Frank, almost um and yeah it destroyed me and i loved it so much um and so i i actually i always kind of like uh i i go for books like that a lot <laughs> like uh in fact recently i read this book called goodbye days it's uh by jeff sentner and it's a ya book um and it totally destroyed me <laughs> like <laughs> like i i love it but you know like i i kind of go for books like that every now and then just as like this reminder that like because you know i feel like i i love i love what i write like i love the cozies and stuff because they're all they're kind of like bubble gum almost you know they're you can kind of pop them in just you know and and get that that fix but then every now and then i like to have that that kind of gut punch <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. I can only handle like, one every couple of years. Right. <laughs> I hate to right. say that, but I think the last one, the last one that just destroyed me was um, all the colors you cannot see, we cannot oh, see. It yeah, won the Pulitzer. Yeah. Have you is read it? All is it all the light we cannot see? Uh, oh yeah, maybe that's it. All the light we cannot. It's about World War Two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I read that. Yeah, I, I did the audio, and yes. Oh my god. Yes. Oh my god, that destroyed me, but. As a reader, I hated the ending, but as a writer, it was perfect. Right. Just perfect ending, just perfect. But as a reader, it just destroyed me. But if you haven't read it, people who are listening, <laughs> hope I haven't just hope I haven't ruined it, but it's definitely worth worth a good cry. It was just yeah. so beautifully written. And it, it was um it was one of the first books I've actually finished that was told in first person or present tense rather. Oh yeah. I normally avoid books that are present tense. And then the next series of books that I read in present tense are um, Amorettes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, and when I saw it was present tense, when I had someone recommend it to me and that if you're listening last week, I talked with Emmerette Anderson about her Hillcrest Witches Mystery Series. And it's told in first person, uh, excuse me. Yeah, it's told in present tense. And normally that just, I cannot read present tense for the life of me. It just, I don't know. I just can't do it. But I can't books, write it. I can read it, but I can't write it. I've tried to write it and no. Oh yeah, I can't, I can't write it either. Can't read it, can't write it. Except hers though. I had absolutely no problem reading hers. And maybe it was the subject matter. I don't know. And but That, and that is a fun the, subject matter. Like, um, I actually have a witch cozy that's in the works. I have this whiteboard over here that kind of tells me, you know, what I'm working on next. And, and I, I actually, I, I built um, 
the the cover for it already and I have the blurb for it already so I know what it's going to be about and all that stuff um so I, I'm ready to write it it's it's going to be a lot of fun I have a uh a, and going back to comics um I had her familiar is going to be a raccoon that's going to be like basically uh rocket raccoon from guardians of the galaxy um but w instead of blasters he's gonna you know have magic ah <laughs> uh, not yeah i don't i don't read a lot of comic books i have um i have a few but i i haven't i haven't read a lot um i interviewed a guy on here i can't remember which episode it was uh, i'll put a link in the show notes but it's um he writes a native american comic okay. called um tribal force so it's um and i i want to say that it's in talks for a movie or something maybe i don't know i maybe jump in the gun um maybe i'm just hoping that it's in that because i really liked it and it's all um native american uh superheroes that's really cool yeah it's really good he's um he's been in a lot of movies and it's like he's been in the industry forever and i'm always saying to him write a book about all your experiences. I mean, he knew John Wayne. When he was a little kid, he worked in something and John Wayne was on the film. And so he's wow. been in the business a lot of years. Uh, so I, I, we went to the comic book store and I got a bunch of different comic books and they didn't have his, of course, I ordered it online. But to get ready to chat with him, I said, I haven't read comic books in years and I've got to go and just look at a bunch. And I, you know, they've gotten beautiful. The drawings in comic books now are really nice. I yeah, they are, they are, and yeah, I, I, I have an idea for a comic that you know one day I'll write. <laughs> yeah, well. and I, I, I don't remember them being so beautiful when I was a kid. You know, maybe yeah, that's, that's why. Probably because they weren't. <laughs> like I, 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 I remember them whenever uh, I was a kid, and they weren't that great. Um, I mean, uh, but they've gotten a lot better. I mean, I. The it, the art wasn't as like you know refined as it is now like because now like all the digital stuff um, is just it's just heads and tails better than you know like the coloring that they could have and even in like the eighties. Oh yeah, 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 um, yeah. Well, yeah, one of my kids does um, uh, graphics, uh, graphic art. Oh, it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. And um, I think I want to make sure I chatted with everything I want to talk to you about. So you've got another. Another one in the Foodies Files coming out Friday. This week? Yeah, this week. Yeah, the 17th, maybe or 19th. Yeah, the 19th. Oh, fantastic. Because this will go live um, whatever Thursday. Oh, I have a calendar right in front of me. This will go live on the 18th. So that's the day it's out? Uh, it's out on the 19th. On, Friday. on the 19th. Okay, so it's out tomorrow if you're listening to this on the 18th. So you can go and grab it. And I think you said you have. The first book is 99 cents, and then you have the next three in a bundle? So the first three are in a bundle. Um, they, I don't remember the price, maybe $4.99 for all three. Um, and, but I think, you know, if, you, if you're checking next week, there's going to be a few sales going on. Um, at, least, at least like the first book's 99 cents. Probably the, the book that's out will be 99 cents, maybe even the second book. Um, I have to check. Uh, we're we're always running like you know promotions. Is you know how things go. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so everybody, there will be links in the show notes. Run and look. It is a lot of fun, and it's also an audiobook. Yes, yes. So been, I listened to the yeah. audiobook, and um, then how many audiobooks? So, so today actually, right now. Um, so today we have three out now. Um, Marvels finally came out. It was it, it was done, but it had been in um, ACX, like headed to retail status for a long time. Um, so it got out today. Then Lattes and Lies, which is the second Comics and Coffee Case Files, um, is also out. And then Salty Taste of Murder, um, which the one you read. Uh, and Angel is working on uh, the second book um, in Foodie Files. So yeah, like, um, we have uh, Jeff Kafer um, reads my books and he's amazing. Uh, and so, and then Angel Clark um, reads Foodie Box. Okay, great. So, uh, so 
There's a lot to choose from. Go and take a look. The links will be in the show notes. And how can people find you if they want to chat with you or may join your mailing list? So yeah, christinezanethomas.com uh, is, is there. Uh, and you can join the mailing list from there. Uh, then we're very, pretty active on Facebook under author Christine Zane Thomas. You can also find me on Facebook as w William Tyler Davis. Um, the, it's kind of interrelated uh, I, because the, the Marvels, like, uh, sorry, the Comics and Coffee Case Files books all like have my name listed as well. Um, just because in case my fantasy fans wanted to like kind of check it out, I allowed that. <laughs> Okay, y'all have your work cut out for you. It's a lot of books to read, so get to clicking on the links in the show notes. And thank you so much for coming by today. Say hey to your wife, Jen, for us. And, uh, geez, when you have a new series, you have to come back and um, tell everybody about your new series. Yeah, the witch, the witch books will definitely be out. Like, I'm, I think I'm going to do like a, a rapid release and save up like three books. So, but be looking for them like probably October. Oh, great. So you'll have to come back in October and um, come back like the week that they're going to be coming out so you can chat about them. Definitely. Fantastic. Thank you so much for stopping by today. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Tyler. You can drop down below into the show notes and you can click on any of these books. You can find Christine Zane Thomas's mailing list and webpage. And I think there was a Facebook page too. So The Salty Taste of Murder is the one that I listen to on the audiobook, and I am just starting the comic book series that Tyler read from today. So go and check those out. You'll find everything in the show notes, and we'll have Tyler back and maybe Jen too. Hi, Jen, uh, in October when their next series is out. And uh, next week, I am not sure at all what we'll have, but I know it'll be a wonderful show. So Come back next week, and in the meantime, go read a good book. Mm -hmm.